today we're going to talk about uh, collecting foliar samples for fo testing for foliar nutrient levels. Um, foliar nutrient testing is uh, particularly valuable for growers. It gives you additional information that you don't get from soil test alone. The levels of various nutrients in the foliage of the trees reflect what's actually taken up uh, by the tree. And so you, you can use that information for a number of different things. One might be uh, if you have trees that have uh, poor color or, or other problems, uh, you can use the, the foliar test to try to diagnose if there are particular nutrient deficiencies or imbalances that may be there. Uh, you can use the foliar testing as a way to uh, monitor your fertilization program um, and you can see signs of uh, deficiencies before they may be uh, apparent visually in the trees. And you can also use um, foliar testing to try to maintain nutrient levels at optimum levels to try to, to really accelerate growth. A couple of things to think about um, just in terms of strategies of uh, having a foliar testing program. Uh, the first thing is, is it's important to, to do it regularly. Uh, going out once and uh, collecting foliar nutrient levels is not going to tell you as much as if you have regular understanding of the nutrient levels in your crop so you can then see if something is changing either for the good or for the poor. You also, because these tests are expensive, uh, you likely want to use a composite sampling approach. Maybe in a particular field, you would go and collect multiple foliar samples from several different trees throughout the field, bulk those into a single sample which you'd send for analysis. Uh, and other things you want to be consistent of, with, you always want to be consistent on the time of the year which you collect these. It's best to collect uh, in the autumn usually October or November after the, the buds have set on the trees. You also want to make sure to pay attention and, and be very consistent in where on the tree you collect your samples and do that all the time. Uh, we particularly, uh, this is a very large tree, we usually try to collect from at least two or three whorls down from, from the leader of the tree, but up on the top third. As you get lower down, especially if there's grass competition, you may have, have differences on the, the lower part of the tree. Another thing, collect from the same side of the tree. Uh, in particular, um, the north versus the south side of the tree will have uh, differences in the characteristics of the foliage. And so when we're doing this in, uh, in some of our research applications, we always collect from the north side of the, the tree. And we tend to see less um, winter injury and other aspects of the foliage that might affect the nutrient levels. Another thing to think about in terms of a sampling strategy is if you're just monitoring, you would want to collect from multiple trees across the field and try to get an idea of uh, an average value for that field. If you have a situation where there's a certain area of the field where the trees seem to be performing poorly or you think that you're developing some type of problem, nutrient problem with your trees, you're probably better off taking an approach where you would have perhaps two samples. One where you did a composite of many of your trees that you would consider to be good trees that are, that are performing well, and then a composite sample of, of trees that are performing poorly or a problem area of the field, good versus bad areas of the field, then you can use the foliar testing to try to understand if this is a, a nutrient uh, related problem and to, to help you then guide you in how you could use fertilization to try to deal with these, these problems.